Hi, welcome on my YouTube channel. My name is Dorota Palicka and I'm international nail artist and educator. We're here today because I would like to show you some different way how to do the ombre. You can see I have done a few different uh, fading with different techniques and uh, I will be happy to show you them all today. Of course, as many nail technicians, as many different ways of doing um, those kind of uh, backgrounds. Um, you can see here as well um, that uh, it have been on ombre tips, which uh, later on I have added uh, some one stroke uh, designs. So let's start the first one. I'm going to buff the tip to remove the shine from it. And then remove any dust which is on it. And first way I'm going to do the ombre is to apply the gel polish and then using the paint on French uh, I will be fading uh, um, white with the sponge. So I'm applying the first layer of the color. And once I'm happy with it I can cure it in a lamp. This is actually a great lamp, uh, it's a Sun Mini 2 Plus, a uh, nice and portable one, great for like uh, nail techs, uh, which needs to have the handy lamp. You can pack it uh, because it folds really nice and doesn't take much of the space. So definitely recommend it. Paint on French gel is an amazing product. And when I will be uh, applying the gel polish, I can tell you a little bit uh, about that as well. So that's the first layer cured. I can apply the second coat. and then cure it. Paint on French gel is so highly pigmented that I like to play with the gel polishes. What you can do is you can add a tiny bit of those uh, paint on French and then mix it with uh, chosen gel polish color to get a nice pastel-y uh, color. So you can see I've got some on the side. So you can just mix them for any, any color you like. What it has happening when you mix it a gel polish with the paint on French, it gives you a better consistency, especially for an ombre. Um, sometimes the gel polish on its own is not thick enough to give you a um, nice blending, and you would probably need to do it in two or three layers, depending on the color. Uh, by adding the paint on French, you've got a really nice consistency um, for the product to blend in really nice. So my second uh, coat is cure, and I can apply the top coat. This is exactly the same way I do the baby boomer, the faded French. Um, so here we're going to show you on the gel polish color, but you can also do the nail enhancements and cover um, pink gel, so you could do it with um, cover nudes acrylics and then just buff the nail and using a sponge and the paint on French you could do a nice uh, baby boomer or faded ombre. So my tip is curing. I will need to buff it and then put the paint on French with the sponge. That's the top coat cured. It is a uh, no cleanse uh, top plexi gel, so I don't have any uh, inhibition layer. I can buff the tip. When buffing the tip, uh, make sure you don't use too rough buffer because you don't want to create too many scratches, then the product can get stuck uh, in those scratches and it doesn't look as nice. I remove the dust and pick up a tiny bit of the paint on French. In other videos I have done um, some 3D designs with it, like a knitted look. Mm, you could also use for a sugar effect. It's a really brilliant product, uh, like one product, so many different uses. 
I take a sponge and uh, I'm start blending my product. If I press lighter, I get more product left. If I press harder, then there is a little product left. So that's my first layer. I can cure it now. I have packed some other tips because I want to show you quite a few different ways of doing things. Then once it's cure, I will be able to put a second layer. Uh, when I'm putting the paint on French, I kind of do very messy smile line, if I can say it this way. Then the blending goes a bit nicer. So I pick up my brush and I apply the product again. So it's all like, a, yeah, as I say, it's a wee messy smile line. <laughs> And then the sponge again. And dab it and just to blend it nice. So you can see how nicely faded it is. I have to cure it, put the top coat and that's it finished. So that will give me exactly the same look we've got in here. Or the same look I've got on here. You can see it. Uh, pink and then white I've got the same look on this tip as well so just a nicely faded white a second way so this I can close my products a second way to do the ombre is to use the fan brush and um, you kind of do it at almost like a one stroke technique when you pick up the product so I'm going on a piece of my foil and I pick up a good amount of the of the gel and then I just go straight into the tip I drag this down and I start blending till I'm happy with the results it's quite nice and easy way of doing the ombre. So you can see the fate we have got with that. But different purples. I can cure this. Well, oh, actually before I cure it, I just clean it a little bit. And the other side. On my other tip, in the meantime, I can just put the top coat. And usually, when we put the top coat, uh, the blending looks even nicer. And I can cure it. Do the same on the other one. And then cure it. On the third T, I can show you also how to do the ombre with a different type of brush so I've got just like an old fine liner and I will pick up a yellow gel apply this in clean my brush and then pick up the clean one And the last, the blue one. So 
that will be a three-way ombre. I clean my brush. I went to the yellow color which I'm starting first and I start blending the, the colors together. Here I've got the join line so I'm start blending it nice. Basically all you do is like you're doing million moves like to blend the color well. Kind of mixing the, the paint or the gels depending what you're working with on the tip. Same like I did with the yellow one, I'm picking up a little bit of the, of the green. And I'm starting blending it with the blue. The moves cannot be too strong because then we remove too much of the color. So that's how we can do three-way three ombre. So we've got yellow, green and a blue. Once you're happy with it, you can cure it. The same way we could do it with a larger brush and uh, that is a little bit quicker. Uh, but it will be harder to do three colors. Um, so usually for a, a three colors I use the smaller brush and then for two colors I will use a bigger one so that's my brush here and I will pick up the white put this on the tip I love paint on French and then maybe a pink and that will be a beautiful connection You can see I have put the product kind of at the angle, uh, just because that's the way I like uh, the two color ombre uh, blends. I can pick up a tiny bit of the paint on French on the one side of my brush, same like kind of for the one stroke technique, a tiny bit of the of the pink, and I will be just blending those places. Um, Places here, so put the tip nice and comfy position, and just start blending. So you can see I've got white, then very light pink, and then going into the darker one. Smooth it out. That's it finished. So that's another blending. A different type of brush, different results. We can also um, do an ombre brush ourselves as well. If we've got some older brush, uh, we can take a scissors and we can cut out some of the hairs. Uh, we can cut out some of the hairs. So basically what you want to do is you want to make it a uh, kind of messy brush. Of course you have to clean that well so you don't get those hairs on the on your gel and you can see I've got nice messy brush at the end which I could use for an ombre 
and maybe do the white and blue again i quite like this connection of the colors Applying white and then blue. Then, using the brush we have done, I'm going to blend those two colors together. You can see once I'm dragging the blue up the way and then the white down the way. And I got one little hair stuck in there. Ah. So make sure you really clean that. That's it. I got it out. Sorry, I have to pick up a tiny bit more blue. And start that a bit white as well. So make sure you clean your brush really good. There we are. And then blend that over again. So that's the white and blue fade. I can cure it. Again, using the same brush, we could go and pick up um, two colors together. Let's do. Let's do uh, orange and a yellow. Same like I would do it for the one stroke, one side and other side, and I can blend it, it on the tip. When choosing your colors for the ombre, make sure you do choose the colors which are blending nice together, which mean I wouldn't example choose um, a purple and green. Um, I try to always pick up a color which will create a um, different color in the middle. Um, so that you can see a gentle fading of yellow and orange. I hope the camera can catch it because uh, that's the pastel colors. Um, I can cure it as well. So that would be all the way, all the techniques I know for the ombre ombre looks and uh, just a summary of it uh, pick up the colors which will create a new color so i can show you here if i mix those two together i get a different shade of purple and that's a good way of doing ombre i could mix together these two colors and that will create an orange in the middle so i've got yellow and the orange and that's a good way um, another one will be the blue and yellow which gives me a green in the middle that's kind of colors I usually try to do for the ombre because that gives the nicer results and I show you the example which I wouldn't use again blue and uh, purple will look beautiful that's a good connection but I wouldn't use this one and this one because it wouldn't look it wouldn't look as good. We don't kind of get a third color in the middle and that doesn't look as nice. Hope you have enjoyed watching this video and if you did subscribe to my channel because in the next one I will have to put some design on those all on all of those ombre tips um, and I'm thinking the one stroke will be a great idea especially that we've got some new brush for a, 
uh, for the level one one stroke uh, and I will be happy to do the video for you uh, how to paint those type of flowers or butterflies on the ombre background which we have done today so thanks for watching bye